What's going on guys? I am so, so, so excited for this uh, new course that me and actually my wife are going to be coming out with. Um, and it's called Singleness Living Like Jesus. And what I want to speak to you about today um, is how we as Christians are called to live a single life. And um, there's a good chance we'll probably do one in the future in regards to how to live a married life as well. But for now, we want to talk in, in light of how to live single and how Jesus has commissioned us and what he says in scripture about how a believer is supposed to live as he is single. Now, you might think, why would you specify how a single Christian is supposed to live? And the reason is because the Bible talks a lot about how a single Christian is supposed to live. And we find that in the church today, that people are generally in one of two camps in regards to living the Christian life as a single. Um, they're generally either extremely missions-based or the vast majority of them are very relationally based. And um, the people who are relationally based, these people are focusing on spending their single years trying to find a spouse. And um, I understand why, I understand uh, the, the logic behind it, but we wanna kind of compare and contrast these things and show what Jesus says from one side uh, to the other and, and kind of how we can assess where you're at currently and make you look more like Jesus in the midst of it because that's this whole idea and process of sanctification, right? Of you looking more like Jesus uh, than you do today and there's a way that you as a single man or woman uh, can do this. And, and I also wanna encourage if you're saying, well, Cody, I should skip off this because I'm married or engaged or dating. Um, please don't do that because if you're dating, I'm going to put you in the same category as a single person for the context of this because you're not married. And um, you as, as somebody who's dating, you're actually going to be generally falling into a lot of the same kind of scenarios as the single person is, believe it or not. So uh, give me one sec. I got to get my marker over here, but I'm super visual. So I, I want to, we're not going to do them all this way, I don't think, but um, you know, with my ministry, my business, I like to visualize everything that I do. So I write everything down and I do it on this board right here. So that's why I have this here and, and hopefully it's going to help you guys like, like it helps me. But anyways, as I said, two camps. I want to specifically focus on the relationship camp for a second here. So we're going to use an R for the relationship camp and then for the other one we're going to use the uh, M for the mission uh, camp, right? And and I'd actually, I'd actually like to, to kind of uh, draw a line down the middle so that you can see kind of the difference here. But anyways, with the relationship camp, the first thing that I want to focus on with the relationship camp is generally people who are single and their eyes are focused and their intentionality is focused on a relationship is an idea that we call self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't know if you've ever heard of this phrase before, but self-fulfilling prophecy is a phrase that means you are going to speak of something um, in context of making it happen by you saying it. Here's what I mean by that, because I know that's kind of a vague phrase. What it means is, is if I say, you know what, I'm going to work really hard this year and I'm going to make more money. And you go out and you work really hard that year, then you're going to make more money. And then you go, ha, see, I told you that I was going to make more money this year. Well, yeah, you did, but it was because you worked hard. So yes, te technically you're right, you did, but it's not some self-fulfilling prophecy, or excuse me, it's not some like special random prophecy in the sense of you said something was gonna come into fruition and just out of nowhere it came into fruition. No, you, you, you verbalized that you were gonna do something or you verbalized that something was gonna happen. Then you made it happen yourself, making it happen. Kind of like saying, um, I bet that, you know, I bet if I go preach the gospel to somebody that I'm gonna live in fear. Well, or, or do it, or I'm not going to be able to do it because I'm going to be in fear. Well, you're, you just made whatever you were uh, concerned about happen because of where your mindset already was. You were in a mindset of, I'm going to be in fear, therefore I'm not going to preach the gospel to somebody. So then when you go up to somebody, you don't preach the gospel and you come back and say, ha, see, I told you that I wasn't going to be able to preach the gospel. And the kind of a logic here is it almost wiggles you out of accountability in this because you said that it wasn't going to happen. But the reality is, is Jesus told us how to live and walk in all of these areas, not necessarily the money analogy. But for this, for the self-fulfilling prophecy, what this looks like in a relationship is you are saying in your mind, you might not say it out loud, but subconsciously you're believing, you know, I want to be in a relationship one day. Therefore, since you want to be in a relationship one day, guess what you do? 
You make your entire life based around your, well, your relationship. Uh, and then you start doing something, this kind of ties into it. Um, we're gonna have kind of a, a, a whole series on each one of these points I'm about to make here. But So what you choose to do is you choose to um, create for yourself an identity around your relational mindset. Um, you have an identity and that identity that you have is all dictating how you live for the purpose of being in a relationship one day. And remember, I'm talking about a relationship with a, a man or a woman, right? So you've got self-fulfilling prophecy, you've got identity, and one that ties very similar in tandem to that as well is your mindset. Have you ever had a time in your life where you were, let's say, um, you were looking to, to get a new game console, a brand new camera, um, a, a new phone or something like that, and it's or a car, let's say, that was probably a more applicable one, and you're just thinking about nothing but that car all day long, all day long, all day long, and then that night you even have a dream about your car because that's all you can even think of because you're so excited about the car. Well, we're going to talk a lot about mindset and how a relationship uh, can actually warp and twist and pervert your mindset. And I don't mean sexual perversion. I just mean pervert as in twist your mindset. It can twist your mindset into something that it's not going to look like. So on the flip side of that, now I want to hit on the other side here, this missions mindset. Missions mindset, um, it has kingdom first. Missions mindset always focus on the kingdom being first in your mind. Um, so it kind of ties back down to this mindset thing here. Um, second off is you are, uh, I should have just done them in order. That would make this a little easier. But second off, you also focus on identity a ton. And finally, uh, you are focused on, so again, that's mindset there. And then finally, you are focused on not only you know, missions, uh, but you're focused specifically on, or I didn't, I meant to say not only mindset, but you're also focused on ministry. These are three of the big things that I, I've taken away, and we're going to add some more to this as well. Um, but these are the big things that we have seen are kind of uh, changing uh, in regards to your stewardship of, of your singleness. Because all of this singleness, living like Jesus conversation we have is all going to be uh, under the umbrella. The, the, this all right here is going to be under the umbrella of stewardship. So this whole thing is going to be on how we steward. I wanted to kind of put that in the middle there. How we steward this time. Uh, I don't even know if you can see that in the, in the picture there. But anyways, we want to be able to steward our time as a single person. Because, um, you know, I, I remember I was just single just not too long ago. And um, I remember when I was single. Um, and I really had an intentionality about being focused on the future. Which is actually another thing I'm going to put um, un under, under here is um, future. So yes, I said kingdom, which is still true, but specifically, uh, also there's some application in regards to your future. I was wanting to know what job do I need to be able to provide for my family if God has called me to have a job in the first place, or we could be like Jesus and not have a job. Uh, and I wanted to focus on what kind of job that I had. I wanted to focus on what kind of friends I was around. I, was, I wanted to focus on, on g gaining wisdom in my single years to be able to apply to my married life. And throughout all of that, throughout all of that, um, what I'd recognized was a lot of people aren't because when I was single, I was focused on those things and the biggest and most important thing to me, for me personally, was ministry and doing ministry and knowing the Lord and doing ministry and then knowing the Lord that helped me do ministry better. And then it was this, it was this cycle that kept on going and going and going and it was really effective. Um, and then I got married and then uh, I, well, I was in a relationship and then I got married. And then when I got married, what I found was that when I was in marriage, um, that I recognized that all my other married friends and, and just people in general, not necessarily just my friends, but I recognized that the married people around me, they would always go, oh my gosh, dude, we have such issues in our marriage. We're, we're arguing about X, Y, and Z. And what I recognized really quickly was, wow, the arguments that you guys have, you wouldn't have the time to have if you were with a kid. And I got married uh, to uh, the most amazing woman. You guys, as I said, you're going to hear a lot from her, Hannah. Um, but she has a son. And, and, and our son, she had him before we were uh, we ended up getting married. So before I even know, knew her, she had him. And I was thinking, wow, 
for me who went into marriage and, uh, and fatherhood at the same time, I recognize now on the back end of that, wow, you guys are worried so much and arguing so much about these really menial things. They're just really this not big deal things that when you have a kid, again, you're not even gonna have the time to worry about those things. And my point with that all is to say, what I found was with every step uh, of the path, your Christian life that you were on, you would always look, or I would always be able to look back at somebody and say, wow, if you guys were focusing on the things that, uh, that you should have been focused on at that point, then you would not be having these wrestles, frustrations, and concerns in your uh, current season that you're in. So if you were single, focusing on your job and ministry stuff and, and a lot of other things that we're going to go into, it's not just tied around those two things, then you would be set up so well for your marriage. Uh, and obviously stewardship of, of relationships and all those things when you're single. And then when you're married, if you're in that space and you're focused on being prepared for having a kid, then when you have a kid, you're going to be in really good shape again. And so on and so on and so forth. But the issue is, is we don't think or consider what's going to happen in the future enough for us to actually make any sort of wise di decisions today in our lives. So what we end up doing a lot of times, I would say that this is over 50% of people, by the way. What we end up doing is we end up living a step behind all of the time. And you probably heard the phrase before, hindsight is 2020, and it's so true. So many people look back and go, my goodness, when I was single, I wish I would have done this. When I was, uh, before I was uh, with kids, I wish I did this, you know. Before I had two, three, four kids, I wish I did this, you know, because the reality is, I'm just going to take one example to prove a point. I know I'm going over more application than you're used to. You're used to hearing more scripture, but fear not. We're going to go into, when we get into, this is kind of going to be the, the intro slash overview. Once we get into it, I'm going to blast you with tons of scripture. So fear not. 